crazy for. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dean Ward and I serve as the lead pastor of the river and I am so grateful that you have chosen to join in with us here this morning. Uh, we are filming today on Thursday afternoon even though we're showing this on Sunday morning. Uh, we are filming it on Thursday afternoon leading up to our grand opening for the river 15068 at 273 Chester Drive. We are having our grand opening this Sunday, September 15th at 9 a.m. and 10.30, and would love to invite all of you to join us. I wanted to film today with uh, all of the bustle and commotion and activity in the background. We filmed outside this garage uh, eight weeks ago, and there has been a transformation of epic proportions over the last eight weeks. We have the concrete patio poured, we have the furniture being built, we have the glass garage doors going in, the inside is complete, the kitchenette is installed, the uh, air conditioning and heating is installed, uh, the, the Wi-Fi will be ready to go as soon as uh, my filming buddy can make that happen. We have uh, so much going on and uh, it is just epic. It is. Uh, all possible through your generosity. Uh, we asked if you would be willing to help us raise $45,000 in addition to what we had already had set aside for this project. And you guys not only helped, you surpassed. Uh, to date, we've raised nearly $58,000 uh, for this renovation project. Um, I, I am just so moved by your generosity and cannot thank you enough. This space is gonna be a shining light for the youth of all of 15068, a place for them to come and belong and connect and grow and thrive and build community in their lives. And cannot wait to see all that God does through this space. So. Uh, they're getting ready for our grand opening. We're getting ready for our grand opening. The, the church is, uh, the painting is going really well. Hopefully you'll be able to see that in the background of the second half of this sermon. And I cannot wait um, to see all that God has in store. Uh, this evening here, Thursday night, we're having a, um, we're filming on Thursday, even though this is showing on Sunday, we're having a night of prayer. Uh, about an hour that we're just gathering together, asking God to move and to work and to do what He does. And uh, so I just, uh, I just ask that you pray with us and for us 
Um, and can we pray now? Father, we are so moved and humbled by the gift of what you have provided for our church that was losing its home, for the Church of God in Lower Burl that was losing um, energy, and how you brought us together for a new future as the River 15068. I am overwhelmed with all that you are doing through so many people to help this space be ready. I am so grateful for this community and this zip code that we are called to reach. And Father, we ask that you would go before us, that you would make the path straight, that you would bless, pour out your favor and anointing on your work here. May we get out of the way and celebrate what you want to do. And Father, may many, may hundreds and thousands of people come to faith in you and grow into fully devoted followers of you through the River 15068. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew. We are um, starting a new series of messages this Sunday and right now, just simply called First. First. And this series of messages is just based on uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Uh, this is an epic verse where Jesus is talking and he just gives us this bit of truth that we are all invited to live by. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Now we'll get to that in just a little bit, um, but today's message is just simply called Finding What's First. Uh, have you ever lost something that you needed to find and you were frantically searching for it? I mean, the search for what you lost was all-consuming. Uh, nearly 24 years ago, my wife Leslie and I were living in Tupelo, Mississippi, and Zoe, our oldest daughter, was uh, just five years old. And we had uh, Abby and Alex as well. They were younger and younger. And we had rented out our house for furniture market. So in Tupelo, being the furniture capital of, uh, you know, the, the world at the time, <laughs> of America at the time, um, every, twice a year they would have vendors come in for a furniture show and there weren't enough hotels. So you could rent your house out for the week. And this is well before Airbnb and all of that went on. And so uh, we found out that we could earn a mere $800 uh, for the week by renting our house out. And uh, we were poor on one income and so every chance we got we rented this out so we had our house all cleaned up we were ready to leave and we were going to drive up to pennsylvania it was in uh august i believe we were driving up to pennsylvania for the week and we were ready to load the car and we could not find zoe uh, abby and alex were accounted for we couldn't find zoe she was not outside playing but we searched outside we walked through the house. It was not a big house, just a modest ranch, three bedroom, two bath. Uh, we, were, we were looking everywhere for Zoe. And the longer we looked, the more frantic we got in our searching for her. Uh, and then we, we really got panicked. Like there was nowhere else to look on our property that she could be. I mean, we looked under every bed. We looked in every cabinet. Uh, we looked everywhere. And before we called the cops, uh, we were just, we, were, we didn't know what to do. And we were in our bedroom and Leslie was just so exasperated. She just yelled, where is Zoe? And she plopped down on our bed that was made with all the decorative pillows uh, at the headboard. You know, uh, like how popular it is to have so many pillows on your bed that 
it almost looks like 10 bowling pins lined up. Like if you could just knock all the pillows down, you'd get a strike. Well, she, she flopped on the bed, screamed, where is Zoe? Uh, in an exasperated voice. And she leaned up against the pillows that were tucked along the headboard of the bed. And she was like, and she started patting the big pillow and she pulled the big pillow away. And Zoe had fallen asleep on our bed along the headboard and Leslie had covered the headboard in making the bed with the pillows and Zoe was fast asleep through it all safe and sound right on our bed. <laughs> well the immediate exuberant relief was uh, quite a relief and then the disbelief that we had looked for her so hard and she was there with us the entire time. This verse is a critical verse. Jesus is teaching in Matthew chapter 6 about all the things that we seek first in our lives, all the things that we let consume us, all the things that we look at in a wrong way and it causes anxiety and worry and stress. And Jesus says, why do, why do you guys worry about all of this? What you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. He, he said, the, the, Heavenly Father, he, he will provide all of these things for you. He said, consider the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. You know, they don't toil, they don't work, they don't. And yet they have all that they need. And Jesus is saying, if you, if you spend your life putting first in your life the pursuit of all of these things as the most important pursuit in your life, that, that you will be empty. And Jesus is saying, no, don't, don't seek that first. Instead, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first his righteousness. And then guess what happens? All of this other stuff that you worry about that, that just gets added to you. I, I saw this in a tangible way this week. My son was lamenting as a young adult that occasionally he goes to buy groceries and how expensive they are. And he's like, I know years and years from now, groceries are going to be so expensive. And he's, you know, starting to build up all this anxiety. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're, you're going you're gonna to make it through. It's going to be okay. And Jesus was noting that his followers have a propensity to worry and get stressed out of things that the Father is watching over you for. That we, when we pursue things first in our life, we are left empty and hollow. And Jesus wants us to know that when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us. Uh, I love the way Ecclesiastes shows uh, one whose life was built about the frantic acquisition of more things. <laughs> and at the end of his life, he looks around in Ecclesiastes 2.11 and says, yet when I surveyed all my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. And Jesus wants us to understand when we find ourselves caught in the pursuit of everything else, when our focus of our life is about accumulating things and acquiring our, um, <laughs> our goals that are set to acquire things, that that is a very empty way to live our lives. And he just speaks to us and says, hey, seek first my kingdom. Seek first my righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first God's righteousness and everything will be added to you. You will have surplus. You will have abundance. 
I, I want to invite you to consider something. When we look at seeking first the kingdom of God, uh, sometimes we think, okay, I'm going to make God number one in my life. And we, we may say, God's going to be my number one priority. And then you can't find your daughter because she fell asleep in your bed and you covered her with pillows. And suddenly she's the number one priority in your life. Finding her is the number one priority. And then, and then you're driving to work and you run out of gas. And then all of a sudden uh, getting to work becomes the number one priority in your life. Or if you're like me and it's time to eat and you haven't eaten for a while and you begin to get very angry and, and your hunger is taking over your life and getting that food is the number one thing in your life. Uh, then where does God fit in all of that? Well, I just, uh, I just want to help us with this because a significant shift happened in my life when I began to view Christ and invite Christ to be at the center of my life. Because when Christ is at the center of my life, yes, I'm seeking him first, but everything flows out of that. And so when I'm on my way to work, the pursuit of my career and my calling, uh, that flows out of my love for God and him being at the center of my life. Uh, when I'm hungry and need to eat, that flows out of Christ being at the center of my life. When I'm frantically looking for someone that I love deeply that I cannot find, that flows out of Christ being at the center of my life. And so I want to invite you to consider as you seek God and his kingdom first above all else that you will look at that as making a commitment for Christ to be at the center of your life and at the center of everything you do. I want to invite you to just take a moment and enjoy this video together with us. Well, let's look at that beginning of that verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 again. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. I, I want to let you know that God is closer than you think. God is closer than you think. Uh, just as Leslie and I were so frantically searching for Zoe and we couldn't find her anywhere, only to find out that she was there all the time. We just didn't see her. And in fact, my wife covered her up inadvertently with the pillows when she had fallen asleep along the headboard. She was there all along. And I think sometimes when we think about seeking God and seeking his kingdom, uh, it, it, it feels like, wait, well, I don't even know how. I don't even know, uh, how, how does that take place? What do I do? What does that look like? Uh, when the internet began, uh, or when I became of the internet, it was around much longer than I was aware of it, but uh, my sister was telling me all about all the great benefits of the internet. And I, I, I remember telling her, Tarla, my plate is so full. I don't have room for one more thing in my life. I can't add the internet to my life. Well, I think when we look at our lives often, 
and we're invited to connect with God and we're invited to seek God and we're invited to have God as part of our lives, we, we kind of have that same feeling like, wait, my life is so full. There's no room. There's no room for God in my life whatsoever. Well, I want to I wanna let you know that God is closer than you think. He has been drawing you, calling you, working behind the scenes on your behalf. He is infinitely more committed to you finding him than you can even imagine. I love this verse in Acts chapter 17, verse 27. Paul is preaching to a group of intellectuals that had never heard the gospel. They had never heard of Jesus. And scripture says that they would spend all day long talking about all of these ideas and they didn't do anything. They just talked about things. And the apostle Paul, they're, they're hearing him talk and like, wait, you're saying some very different things. What, what is this about? And he begins to introduce them to who God is. And in verse 27, and he, he describes the world and, and everything that had led them up to that point in their lives. And then he said, God did this so that they, meaning people, would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. God is closer than you think. Uh, the second thing that I want you to be very clear of, clear on, is that God is indeed seeking you. It's not like you are just called to seek God and he's playing hide and seek, trying to uh, stay stealth and stay away and stay avoided by, from you. He, he, he is seeking you. He is pursuing you. He is looking for you. I love the way that 2 Chronicles 6.19 describes the Lord. It says, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Now, you may say, well, my heart's not fully committed to him, so how do I know God's pursuing me? God spared not his own son in pursuit of you. The entirety of Scripture is a love story of God's pursuit of you, of his desire to be in relationship with you, of his commitment to connecting with you, of walking with you. God indeed is pursuing you. He is chasing you. He is searching for you. God is seeking you. And the last thing I want to invite you to consider is just living with an openness to God in your life. Uh, live with an openness to God in your life. That's a great place to start. Uh, so many times we find ourselves running from him with our back turned toward him. And, and if we just stop running and just turn toward him and, and just say, I'm okay, I'm open. <laughs> I, I, I love the way that C.S. Lewis describes his conversion when he called himself the most reluctant convert, convert to Christ in all of England. When he crawled out of bed and knelt by his bed, after all his resistance, all his running, he just finally said, okay, God, you win. You win. When we choose to live with an openness toward God in our lives, th things begin to change. First of all, you get, you get surprised at how gracious God is. I love the way this Jesus describes this invitation to live with an openness to him in Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Whenever he said, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in 
and eat with them and they with me. Will you live with an openness to God? James chapter four, verses eight and 10, describe it this way. James says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. I don't know where you have been in your journey with God. Perhaps you've been walking with him for a very long time, or perhaps you've been a church person trying to fill that void just with endless activity, (laughs) doing all these things for God, serving God, looking around saying, I'm doing more for God in this church than anybody else. And, And you start to build a resentment toward God. Is that not kind of that pursuit of things? in our lives that find us empty? If if you serve God and often have bitterness that no one is working as hard as you, serving as hard as you, doing what you, uh, the things that you're doing, caring as much as you're caring, then I, I wanna invite you just to take a step back and open yourself to God. Put a pause to all the frantic trying to fill that gap and pursue things first and just open yourself up to God. Open yourself up to his love and his grace and his forgiveness and his joy and his life and all these things will be added to you. If you are claiming to be a follower of Christ and you are miserable, then something's broke. Because when we seek God, his kingdom, and his righteousness first, it's not like adding one more thing to our plate. It's like putting a place setting before us that has more room and space and margin than we could ever imagine. And so I want to invite you today just to take that next step toward Christ. Just open yourself up to him. For me, the first notable time I did that was when I was five years old and I just invited him to come into my life. I remember being led in a prayer by a Good News Club teacher as a five-year-old little boy and she just asked, do you want to ask Jesus into your heart? And I opened my life to him for the first time and that was the beginning of everything. And so I just want to ask you, Do you want to open your life to Christ today? If you do, take this step toward him. I just want to invite you to pray with me, confessing your desire to open your life to Christ. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for pursuing me. And today I open my life to you. I ask you today, Jesus, to come into my life. I know I've done a lot that I'm embarrassed of, and I I ask you to forgive me of all of that. I accept your gift of life and grace and salvation. Thank you for welcoming me into your family. I open my life to you now, in Jesus' name, amen. I I just want to ask if you've opened your life to Christ today or previously, don't stop. (laughs) Wake up every day with a posture of openness to him, and I can't wait to see the journey that he is and will take you on. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in with us today. I can't wait till I get to be with you guys again next week. God bless.